Very good morning, church. Welcome to this morning our Christmas service online. And let's lift our hearts as we join our hearts together to worship the Lord this morning. And as we go to read from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 8 to 11. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning as we come during this Christmas season, we want to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ coming to this earth 2,000 years ago. And Father, we want to bless you. We want to lift out our voices to praise the Savior. We want to lift our voices to give praise to our God, hallelujah, who came to this earth 2,000 years ago. Father, we want to commit this time to you as we worship you with our heart and our thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. And all the people say, Amen. As we pass this time to Sir Jenna to lead us this high worship. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome to our Christmas service this morning. So wherever you are in your home, uh, can you all just stand on your feet as we prepare our hearts to worship our King this morning. Amen.
So shall we all just give him a round of applause from wherever your homes, just give him a clap as we welcome him. Amen. Good morning to all of you this morning, uh, watching from home. I uh, wish you a blessed Christmas, even as we celebrate Christmas uh, this Sunday. And uh, this year Christmas is very different from any other years. We normally we have our big gathering. We have uh, you know inviting your friends and. Uh, relative to come and celebrate Christmas with us and then we have the time of uh, feasting together and uh, because of COVID-19 pandemic the CMCO you have, in Slango has been extended until end of the year although the government has uh, graciously allowed the churches to have the masses uh, uh, Christmas mass on uh, Christmas Eve and on Sunday I uh, know uh, on Christmas Day at the service but uh, it's very limited to a small number and because of the increase of number of cases in, uh, in Slang or in Kuala Lumpur and uh, the eldership of FCD has decided not to have on-site service for the time being and uh, even though it's open uh, for this Christmas day but we, we hope you can join us to our, our Zoom uh, meeting on Christmas celebration fellowship on Christmas Day, 11 o'clock, we join together and partake the Holy Communion together, we worship together and fellowship together to see each other through Zoom. Amen? So we hope you can join us on Friday, this coming Friday. And uh, so this morning I want to share with you on the purpose of Christmas. Why do we celebrate Christmas? Most Christians will say to remember the birth of Jesus. True. But to some who are not Christian, then uh, Christmas is just another festival, another uh, festival day that they celebrate, and uh, just time of partying and happy, and uh, just enjoying great food. But what is the real purpose of Christmas? Why did Jesus come to Earth in this in the first place? Why did He come two thousand years ago? And this morning I want to share with you. Um, to understand the purpose of Christmas. And number one, the, pur the, the purpose of Christmas, Jesus came to reveal to us what God is like. That is the first purpose of Jesus coming into this earth 2,000 years ago. It is to reveal what God is like. Who is this God? In the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 21 and 23 says, Because although they know God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts were darkened, professing to be wise. They became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Apostle Paul wrote this letter, at least epistle, and telling us that because of the darkness of mankind in their heart because of the sin nature in them and although the nature tells us about God there is a God, there is an existence of God but because of the darkened heart they begin to choose to, uh, to worship the image made of man birds and four-footed animals and creeping things Surprisingly, that if you, you travel all over the world, you will know that people worship all kinds of gods. And uh, just to name some of them, throughout the culture, every culture in the history of the world has had some concept of what God is like. 
Some have assumed that God is in control of the weather and make images of storm, of storm gods, uh, uh, throwing lightning bolts around. And this one we see in the in the biblical time in uh, Canaan land. Uh, that was before the Israelite enter and took possession of the Canaan land that we call the promised land. The Canaanites were worshipping this God called the God of Baal. In Egypt, they worshipped this sun god. In one of his many forms, the word Ra, God of the sun, has the head of a falcon and the sun, uh, this inside a cobra resting on his head. People worship all kinds of images of human beings, people who have died, who have, people who are, uh, uh, have been uh, uh, very uh, influential, you know, and uh, they begin to adore them and begin to worship him. And even trees, people worship trees. So the first purpose of Jesus coming to this, uh, we need to, rem to remind ourselves that he come to reveal who God is to us. Who is this true and living God? And that is an incident in the book of Exodus chapter 32. The story tells us that the Israelite was in Egypt in slavery for 430 years. They cried out to God and asking God to deliver them. So God sent uh, Moses uh, as a leader to let them out of Egypt out of Egypt from, uh, from Pharaoh's domain, from Pharaoh's control. And they came out of Egypt and uh, passed across the Red Sea. They walked on the dry ground. The Red Sea was opened in two. And they went across the Red Sea and came to this mountain of, called Mount Sinai. And Moses was up to the mountain. And God was asking Moses to come up to the mountain to receive special instruction for the building the tabernacle and to give them the instruction of the Ten Commandments or how to worship Him. So he was up there receiving this instruction of God. But down there, the people began to, you know, waiting uh, very impatiently. Let me just read to you in Exodus 32, verse 1, and see what happened. Exodus 32. Okay. Now, let me just read to you verse 1. It says, Now when the people saw that Moses delay coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron. Aaron is uh, Moses' assistant. And said to him, Come, make us God that shall go before us. For as for this Moses... The man who brought us out, up, out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron, Aaron said to them, Bring off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and your sons and daughters and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from the hands and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded car. Then they say, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Human have a very, uh, what we call, forgetful memory. They were just let out from the Egypt in a tremendous, miraculous way that how God led them out of Egypt. And how they saw God defeated to, uh, uh, to, to Moses, you know, and uh, to all the ten plagues that came upon uh, Egypt, and how they crossed over the Red Sea, the, the Red Sea was open, and how the God destroyed the whole armies of e the Egyptian for chasing after them. And God was leading them in the pillar of fire in the night and the pillar of cloud in the day. And now here, they say, let us worship this modern car. An image that they make out of gold. They have forgotten who God is to them. And today, people worship all kinds of things. 
Some people worship money. As I say, somebody worship trees. Some worship stone. So anything they can worship, they worship. But that is not the true and living God. And that is why Jesus came to this earth to reveal who God is to us. Now this next verse is a very important verse I want you to read and look at it. John chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, yet you have not known me, Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father, so how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The word that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the word. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus said to Philip, these words that says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus was a full embodiment of God. And he, when a man sees Jesus, he sees a person who is the very nature of God, who is the very character of God, who is the very substance of God, who is the very perfections of God, who is God in all of His perfect being. Jesus Christ is not the same person as God the Father, but He has the same perfect nature. Jesus Christ is God. The Son. Therefore, the person who has seen Jesus Christ has seen the Father in all the fullness of the Father's nature. That person has seen in Jesus the very embodiment of perfection. Hallelujah. When you see Jesus, Jesus said, You have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus is the Son of God. We know in, in, in Christianity, our God that we worship consists of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to three in one. Each of them are different person. Amen? So in a sense that God, Jesus come in a, in a human form. He is God Himself, the Godhead, and He come in the human form and to reveal to us that who God is. That's the first reason that Jesus came to this earth, to reveal who God is to us. And the second reason, the purpose of Christmas is that Jesus came to reveal to us the love of the Father God. This verse in John 3.16 is a very popular verse that we use. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. What did God do? That God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. So that when we believe in Him, the Bible says, you will not perish but have everlasting life. And all of us know that one day we will live this world. We will die uh, physically. But the Bible says, God, uh, John 3.16 says, that when, when we believe in Jesus, we will not perish but have everlasting life. I used to tell people, on the funeral, and I tell them, the, the day, you know, when we finish our, our life on this earth, we begin a new life in heaven. Our life begins, continue on, our journey on, in, a net, in another place called heaven. Hallelujah. In, in book of Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God demonstrated His own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ dies for us. When we were still sinners, when we still were still rebellious, when we were still rejecting Christ, the Bible tells us God demonstrated His love towards us. Even though we don't believe in Him, even though the people, when, when Jesus was on this earth, you know, and, and, and the people throw at Him and to, uh, want to crucify Him, but God demonstrated His love towards us that He sent His Son to us while we were still sinners. What did He do? He died for us, for you and I, for our sins. This Christmas, we celebrate Christmas, most of the time, you know, that's a big celebration. But I want you to know the purpose of Christmas, the purpose of Jesus coming to, into this earth. 
We celebrate not just because He had come and do this earth, we celebrate because of the purpose that Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago. To give us a new life. He sacrificed His life for us. So you and I has a, a, a opportunity to come back to the Father God. Hallelujah. And thirdly, the purpose of Christmas is that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says, He who sinned is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might, what? Destroy the works of the devil. It is so clearly spelled out in this verse that the purpose of Jesus coming into this earth is to destroy the works of the devil. What are the works of the devils? You may ask, what are the works of the devil? In John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The tea does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. All throughout history, you begin to see, you know, today in the world, you'll see the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. They destroy lives, they destroy marriages, and they destroy everyone, you know, who, who put our faith in Jesus. It is uh, to try to put people into bondage, in sin, living in sinfulness, you know, uh, living in uh, under the addiction of drugs and all kinds of substance abuse and causes human beings without living without hope and uh, and taking their own lives. That is the purpose of Satan is to destroy his life because he doesn't want you to come to the Savior. He doesn't want you to enjoy life. He doesn't want you to come to the fullness of abundance life. In John 10 verse 10, the second verse says that Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. But Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy. And that happened right from the book of Genesis in the beginning. In Genesis chapter 3, we read about how Satan came to deceive mankind in sin against God in the first human uh, being that God created, Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve in the image of God, in the likeness of God. And, and God's purpose was for them to continue to enjoy the fellowship, to enjoy the relationship with the Father God forever and ever. And Satan came. Through a serpent to deceive Eve in the partake of the fruit of knowledge of the good and evil. Which God instructed Adam and Eve not to partake of it. Because when they partake of it, they will die. They will die physically, but more importantly is that they will die spiritually. It means that they were completely separated from the presence of God. And true enough, after they partake of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, they were separated from the presence of God. They were chased out from the Garden of Eden forever. As a result, we see that mankind began to deteriorate. From that day onward we, onward, we see that death began to come into human mankind. Human mankind began to suffer. They suffer, and, uh, and, and we see that uh, the people began to suffer with all kinds of sicknesses. There are wars and rumors of wars, and uh, fighting, the happening, terminal illness, all kinds of suffering that human beings going through, and you know, marriages breaking up. And uh, even Christian marriages are bringing up. Addiction, there's so many addiction, drugs, uh, and, uh, and human beings suffering. And, uh, this COVID-19 has, has taken up uh, the one point, more than 1.5 million people have died from COVID-19. This virus. Wars, many people have died during the World War I and World War II. Illness, terminal illness, so many people were suffering from terminal illness because all this as a result of sin came into the world to Adam and Eve disobedient. And that is the reason why Jesus came to this earth. He has to break the power of sin so that you and I are set free 
on the domain of sin and control by sin, by Satan. I want you to read one verse in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. In verse 2, he says that in which you once walk according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now work in the son of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and even by nature, children of God, just as others. So Paul was writing to the church in Ephesus. He said that you will once walk according to the cost of this world, the philosophy of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, who is the devil, the spirit who now works in the sun of disobedience, the, the control by the demonic forces and living under their control because of sin. But Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He break the power sin and control of our life. So when you put your faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that power of sin that has been broken for our lives. We have been set free. Hallelujah. Then come to our first purpose of Christmas. In that Jesus came to reckon us back to God. You see the bridge? Okay? People who are in sin, God is on the other side and Jesus came to become that bridge so that we can come back to the Father God. As I mentioned just now earlier that God created Adam is, is to have the fellowship, that relationship forever because of sin. And their relationship has been broken, their fellowship has been broken and they cannot come back to God because God is a holy God. And that is why Jesus has to come to this earth to die on the cross for your sin and my sin. To break the power of sin. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 2 Corinthians 5.21 Verse 21 Let's just read to you. For he make him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. For God who made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become what? The righteousness of God in Christ. So when Jesus hung on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago, when he said, it is finished, all your sin and the sins of the world have been nailed on the cross of Jesus Christ. And it's settled. And on the third day, he rose again. And He gives us that the opportunity to come back to Him, hallelujah, to the Father God, hallelujah. So when you put your faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what happened is that you are, your sins have been forgiven completely. And God put the righteousness of God inside of you. And that is why now your sins have been forgiven. You, you are washed with the blood of Jesus. Then we can come to the Father God who is a holy God. Not because of our good work. Because of the precious blood of Jesus that has washed us clean. And that is why we can come to God and to worship Him. And we can cry out, Abba, Father. We can worship Him wherever we, wherever we are. Because God is a spirit. Amen. And even though we are not able to gather together for quite some time now, but God is everywhere. God is in your heart. God is where you are, at your home, worshiping Him. Hallelujah. When, when, you, when you call upon the Lord, hallelujah, God is near. Because He gives us the Holy Spirit to join inside of us. Hallelujah. Romans 5 verse 10 says, For even if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through what? 
to the death of his son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18 say, Therefore, if anyone is in, in Christ, he is a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Jesus came so that you and I can be reconciled back to the Father. So you and I can be restored our relationship with our Father God. I want to close with this testimony of a great late Billy Graham. Uh, he's one of the greatest evangelists of our time. And uh, he was born in 1918. And I uh, lived until uh, 2018. He passed away at the age of 99 years old. Wow. But his life was a inspiration because why and at the age of 16 years old in his autobiography at the age of 16 years old in 1934 he gave his life to the Lord Jesus in one of the uh, revival meeting in his hometown and uh, by the name of Dr. Ham and he was he went there and uh, he heard the message he was touched by the Holy Spirit and he went forward to receive Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. And that changed his entire life. From that day onward, you know, and, and then he became a, a, a preacher of the gospel and he started uh, his crusade in 1947 at the age of 29 years, started having big crusade, you know, preaching the gospel to thousands and millions of people. And uh, he says that uh, th throughout his uh, entire life that he has spoken to more than 200 people, uh, more than 200 people at the crusade in parks, arena, over six continents, about 185 nations, territory. According to his staff, he says that an estimated 3.2 million people give their life to Jesus. And through his uh, broadcast to the television and radio, they say they estimated at least 2.5 billion people have heard the gospel being preached. Hallelujah. There's about one third of the whole world. Wow. What an what a ins inspired uh, person. What an what a inspired person he is that he lived his life to proclaim the gospel. And this is his purpose in one of his quotes. He says, my one purpose in life is to help people find a, what? a personal relationship with God, which I believe comes through knowing Christ. My one purpose in life is to help people find a personal relationship with God, which I believe comes through knowing Christ. And that is exactly what Jesus came to this earth. So that you and I can have a personal relationship with Jesus and with Father God. Which you have lost in the Garden of Eden to the rebellious, to the sin again of Adam and Eve. But Jesus came so that we can be reconciled back to Him. The greatest need in the world is the transformation of human nature. We need a new heart that will not have lust and grief and hate in it. We need a heart filled with love and peace and joy. That is why Jesus came into the world. As I close this morning, this is a simple message to remind us of what Jesus came 2,000 years ago. The purpose of Christmas. God has done everything possible to provide salvation for you and I, but we must reach out in faith and accept it. In closing, as we celebrate Christmas from our home as believers of Jesus, 
Let us be thankful to God for what Jesus has done for us 2,000 years ago. The Son of God came to this earth, born as a baby in a manger in Bethlehem. He carried out his mission when he was 30 years old and died on the cross for all human mankind. Let us continue to be steadfast in the faith. Let us continue to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to all mankind. For those of us who have gone astray, our, our faith has grown, our heart has grown cold. For whatever reason, you know, you were once you were uh, uh, very fervent for the Lord, but now you have gone cold and you've gone to the world and you enjoy the pleasures of the world. I want to challenge you this Christmas season that you will return back to God. If you hear this message, if you hear the Christmas carol, if you go to shopping mall and you hear the Christmas carol and you hear messages and please remember that Jesus loves you. Jesus is waiting for you and I to come back to Him. Hallelujah. And I pray that during this Christmas, the, Christ, the greatest Christmas gift that you can have is to come back to Jesus. And thirdly, for those of you who doesn't know Jesus at all, you may have heard the gospel for many times. You may have come to church to hear, and you may have come, you know, uh, people invited you for Christmas service, and you you come to hear the gospel message. And I want to pray that today that you will put your heart, uh, put your faith in the Lord Jesus, that you open your heart to receive Jesus into your life, into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior. Jesus is coming back. As, as many things are happening as we're living in this COVID-19 pandemic for already almost one year. And we are crossing into 2021 and with the, with the uh, 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 vaccine available started to roll out into the world. And uh, we are hoping that we will come better. But it is just a beginning of the beginning of some of these are just a sign that Jesus' return is soon. And Jesus is calling back you and I to come back to God. God is calling you to come, to experience Him, to, to, to have a personal relationship with Him, with the Father God. In closing, I want to pray with all of you. And if you are, if you want to accept Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior, and I pray that you will pray this prayer with me. Amen. And as we close, if you are, uh, backslidden and you are having a roll call, I want to make a prayer with you that you will make a commitment today that you will commit to walk closely with God from this day on. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We thank you for Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago to reveal who God is to us. He came to the earth 2,000 years ago to reveal the love of God the Father to us. And He came to this earth to destroy the works of the devil. And lastly, He came to this earth so you and I are being reconciled back to the Father God, to the death of Jesus Christ, of our Savior. Father, we want to pray right now for those of you your heart has grown cold. And you just say, God, where are you? My heart has grown cold. And I don't know whether I still believe in Jesus today. I want you to pray this prayer with me and say, Father God, I repent of my sin. Please forgive me for my doubt and unbelief. Please forgive me for walking away from you. And for this day, I make a fresh commitment to put my faith in follow Jesus all the way. For those of you who doesn't know Jesus today, I want to pray with you that you will put your faith in Jesus today and you repeat this prayer with him after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin 2,000 years ago. I repent of my sin. I open my heart to receive you into my heart to be to be my Lord and Savior. I believe that God that raised Jesus on the third day. And right now, I open my heart to invite you to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. 
Please, Lord, come into my heart. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And for those of you who are suffering, going through certain illnesses, right now I want to pray with you. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. I want to pray with you that you will have hope in Jesus. I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus for those of you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, who are suffering of sicknesses and illnesses, Right now, Father, I pray that you stretch out your hand in the name of Jesus and Lord, and touch them wherever they are in Jesus' name and bring healing and hope to them in Jesus' name. Lord, let them continue to be steadfast in the faith. Let them continue, Lord, to remain unshakable in their faith in Jesus' name, Lord. Father, we want to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let this Christmas, Lord, the time that we reminded ourselves the purpose of Jesus coming to this earth. Die on the cross for our sins so that we are being reconciled back to you in Jesus' mighty name. And all the people say, Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We uh, want to wish you a blessed Christmas and uh, we hope you join us this coming Friday at 11 a.m. to Zoom. You will send it to the cell leader. They will forward to you the link. Have a blessed Christmas. Stay safe. In Jesus' name, amen.